Psalm 121. First thing we see here, number one, you won't fail me. Verse three, it says, he will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. And really what he's saying is that he will enable me to stand. He will enable us to stand. Not even just particularly to this situation here at church, but to whatever you're going through. He is not, I love this, he will not allow your foot to be moved, to be tripped up, to stumble, to cause you to fall. No. Who wants that to happen? The enemy wants that to happen. God says, no, I'm not going to allow it. And, and of course, these promises that are in God's word, I need to appropriate. You know, it does me no good to read God's word and not believe what I'm reading. When he tells you, don't fear, oh, I'm afraid of everything. No, don't fear. Why? Because God said that he's going to hold your hand. God said he's going to work this out. God said he's the one that's going to go before you and take care of the situation that is there. Quit focusing on that, the negative part of it. Focus on the greatness of God and who he is, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. You won't fail me, Lord. Number two, verse four, you won't forget me. I love this part. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. In other words, God is not going to fall asleep on the job. Now, a lot of us, you know, we have trouble keeping awake sometimes, you know, and, and sometimes my wife at night, you know, we'll be talking and everything, and she'll have something really important to be telling me, but I'm kind of like, as she's talking, what happens, guys? <laughs> you kind of start, did, did you hear what I said? Oh, yeah, I heard everything you said, but, but keep talking because this is, I'm really feeling comfortable here. <laughs> she's not here tonight, so I could say that, so, but he won't forget. He won't forget. He will ever watchful and wakeful, and his eyes are always on me. He's not going to sleep. He's not going to slumber. He's not going to fall asleep on the job that he has promised to do for us. And we can take that to the bank, you guys. He won't fail me, and he won't forget me. And I love that, that I did it. God is intimately acquainted. Psalm 139 is such a great psalm that God knows everything that's going on. Oh, Lord, you have searched me. You have known me. You know my sitting down. You know my rising up. You comprehend my path. You understand from afar what's going on in my life. He even says there in that psalm that he knows every word on my tongue before I speak one word. And we can't get away from his presence. No matter how far away we go, God knows. He's not going to forget us, you guys. He won't fail. He won't forget. But the psalmist goes on to say, number three, in verse five and six, that you will protect me. Now, again, picture Hezekiah. The Assyrian army is out there. The enemy is there. And they see that's real. That's by sight. By faith, he's looking up. Man, Lord, I need to see you real quick here. But he looks beyond the things that help, that he could be calling upon, that other, other nations had called upon. And even in the taunting that the, the Rakshabi does there in Second Chronicles chapter 32 of taunting the, the children that are on the wall, they're looking, saying, hey, all the other nations called out to their gods, and they did nothing for them. <laughs> what makes you think your God is going to do anything? Hezekiah looks beyond that. No. The maker of heaven and earth. He is the one that will protect me. He says here in verse 5 and 6, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. What's he talking about here? Kind of an interesting way of using the words here. The Lord is your keeper. Basically, he's your defender. He is your keeper. He is the one. Our faith is kept by God. He is the one that's going to keep you. It is the power of God's Holy Spirit that keeps you walking in his ways as long, of, as, of course, as I am obedient to his word, right? I mean, God has given me the free will. I can turn left. I can turn right. But the Holy Spirit is that, that bumper car, in a sense, is kind of pushing me back in line keeping me going. He's my keeper. He's my defender. But also says here that the Lord is your shade at your right hand. What's he talking about? I am always in his presence. He is my shade. How do you get shade? By standing underneath something that is casting a shadow upon you. Who is watching over you right now? Who is at your right hand right now? 
It's not a test. I mean, maybe <laughs> it's not that hard. Difficult. The Lord is the one who's right there. He is the one who's holding your right hand. In his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. I love that when you read the Psalms, that God is right by our side. Always. You know, we're going to commission the, the Philippine mission trip. The Lord is going to be with them every single step of the way. Not only with them right now, but with them, he's gone before them. And he's taking care of the things for them. He's going to protect them over there. He's the defender in his presence. That is that shade. But verse 60 says, the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. What, what does that mean? Is the sun going to kind of just fall from the sky and hit you in the head or the moon? No. What he's talking about is that no matter what happens by day or by night, amen, the Lord is there and no harm is going to come to you. Promises in God's word for us. I love that. I love the picture here. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. No matter what happens during the day, okay, the Syrian army is going to attack during the day. Hey, everything's going to be fine. Oh, they're going to decide to attack by night. Everything's going to, hap- going to be fine at night. You know, I'm reading that book um, called um, Unbroken, the story of uh, uh, Louis Zamperini. Anybody read that book yet? <laughs> a few out there. Come on, he's this guy from Torrance. You've got to read this book. But it's incredible, the story about how, the, you know, of course, it was World War II in Japan, you know, the United States gets sucked into the war, and how they would attack always at night and come at night. And, and yet, in this context here, no matter if they came at night, the Syrian army, or during the day, the Lord was going to be the one to help us, to be the one who would protect us, to watch over us and keep us safe. So the Lord won't fail me, he won't forgive me, but also he will protect me. And lastly, number four, he's going to preserve me, verse seven and eight. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul, and the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. He will keep me from evil, and he also he will keep my salvation. I love the idea that in that, you know, we, we have this idea, of course, that we can lose our salvation, and, and if we follow the Lord, we abide in him, we can never lose our salvation. And yet, who is it who's going to keep us? Who is it that's going to keep that salvation there reserved in heaven for me? It is him, kept by the power of God, who through faith in him, he's the one that's going to keep us. He'll preserve me from evil, from everything. And, and the idea, of course, is that, that we always have to keep our eyes focused on the Lord. Amen? Back to verse 1. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from who? The Lord. And it speaks of this idea of always having our focus on the Lord. Now, we know in who knows how long, but eventually the person sitting here will be the shepherd, the senior pastor of this church. And so God is going to be faithful to show us. We'll look back in this time. But you know what? Nothing can change in the context of who we keep our focus on. Because no matter who fills this pulpit, it's the Lord who is the shepherd of this church. It's the Lord that's going to protect this church, going to watch over this church, going to preserve this church, and to continue to keep this church going forward. And of course, we know that, but sometimes we can, in our lives, begin to look elsewhere. We can look to maybe ourselves. We can look to our spouse. We can look to that job. We can look to the things of this world. We can look to the, the idol of money, your bank account. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking to. That's where my help comes from. And we know people like that. Of course, that's what makes this whole world go round. And yet, we know by experience, in looking to those things before we came to Christ, what did they do for us? No satisfaction. Pastor Don used that today. John Henry used it last week. Can't get no satisfaction. This world isn't going to satisfy you. You can't look to the things of this world, as we know this. But how come then do I start looking to those things thinking, okay, if, if, if I only had this job, or if I only lived here, or if I only had just a little bit more money in the bank, then, man, I'd be comfortable. I'd feel better. If I only drove a car that, you know, had more than two wheels, I mean, or three wheels. <laughs> Some cars out there, they're looking pretty rough. But it doesn't matter. It's what God has in store for us. You know, interesting, um, yesterday I was waiting for my wife. She was shopping. I was tired. I was in the car. I said, I'm going to sit in here and just kind of relax and listen to some music. Well, I listened to this song. 
And I hadn't heard it on this album that I was listening to because I hadn't had enough time to be in a car to actually listen to the whole thing. But I'm in there. And all of a sudden, this song came on. It's a song called Always by the Rhett Walker Band. Anybody heard of that group? Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I'm not a real country fan. Kevin's about as country as I get, Pastor Kevin. But I listened to this song, and it was just, it's full country. It's, it's got the, the slide guitar stuff going on it, but it was beautiful. And it was entitled Always, and there's a chorus in there that says, I lift my eyes up to the hills. My help comes from the Lord. And, and I started listening to that, and then how many of you guys read Psalm 121 this morning as you were reading through the Bible? Reading on the same reading program that the, the, the staff is. And it just tied in so perfectly, I thought, you know what, I want to listen to that song. And as that song is going, the worship team is going to come back up, and then we're going to go into a time of communion. But in the context of Psalm 121 and the words that were written in this song, listen to it. Um, you may not like country. You might think, oh, this is, but it actually is a very sweet song. It might cause you to go out and get this guy's album or this band's album. But it spoke to my heart so much that it brought comfort, even in the place that I find myself in here with the church with Pastor Steve being gone. A lot of crazy stuff has gone on. Amen. Who would have ever thought that we had found ourselves in this place? And I still find myself shaking my head, still find it so still surreal that, that we're even here. The, the shirt that I was wearing today, this morning, Pastor Steve, that's the last shirt he gave to me. He always gives me clothes. Most of them are a little too big, but, you know, some of them fit. And, the, and, and yet, you know, it's just that I put that on and went, just that, that moment, just stopping, and yet... We just, we got to trust and know that in all this, God's great plan, and we've heard that time and time again, and we know that God's going to be faithful. Pretty soon, we won't need to be talking about this because God is going to come. But even in our own lives, outside of Calvary Chapel South Bay, where you live, where life is going on, and where things are happening, and, and um, situations and circumstances is, is going on. Listen to the words of this song, reading and in line with Psalm 121. Hey, where's our focus? God will always provide. He will always protect. He will always be there for us. He's going to show us the way. But the key, of course, for me and you tonight, where are my eyes? What am I looking to? Am I looking to the things on the hills, the stuff of this earth? Or am I looking way beyond that to the Lord? He is our helper. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you again, Lord. And I pray that even as we listen to this song, Lord, would you minister to our hearts? And, and Lord, afterwards, as we go to communion, and as we partake, Lord, uh, your body, your blood, your commitment to us, your, your, your guarantee, in a sense, of the promises that are in God's word that we read tonight, assured of that Thousands of years ago, you knew that we would be here tonight. And as you broke that bread and as you um, passed that juice, that wine around to the disciples, telling them to do this in remembrance of what I have done and what I will do and what I will continue to do. Lord, we receive that promise. We receive those promises tonight to ourselves. Lord. So speak to our heart, minister Lord, as we continue this night in Jesus' name. Amen.